All right, welcome back to the channel. We just had our I Am Nerd Frozen Soul Cup, which was a $1,000 cash tournament that was free entry for everyone in the I Am Nerd Podcast Discord server. Uh, and that tournament played with a special rule where you could only use one of each card. So it was Edison format, but Highlander at the same time. Again, that means that you can only use one of each card. And yeah, we had a really, really nice turnout. And also the top eight was super competitive. So I just want to go over the top eight deck list from this event. And I think it's really cool. Shout out to Jazz who runs Format Library, but he was able to make it where the Retrobot recognizes Edison Highlander as its own format. So that way when you do tournaments in this format and you submit a deck list, if your deck has more than one of any card, it'll reject it and tell you that you need to remove it or whatever. Um, so Edison Highlander is a format now officially that people can play, which I think is awesome. And it's just like an alternative to playing regular Edison. Like, of course, we all still love regular Edison format, but this was kind of a cool thing to do and people in my server tend to like it so every once in a while we throw tournaments for this and we also throw regular edison tournaments as well usually they're like eight man sometimes a little bigger uh, but basically just like a local size tournament in any event this is one of the top eight deck lists so this one is from Vinny casello it is zombies essentially um and he's playing shooting doji which a lot of people i forgot that this card existed until i've seen it and this is one of the cool things about the highlander format is that you're going to see things that you either never see play in edison or you don't even know that it's a card at all. Uh, but shooting Doji, I remember this being a secret rare way, way, way back when and thinking that it would have so much potential and then no one ended up playing it. So what it does is once per turn, you can activate one of these effects, banish two zombies from your grave, draw a card, and then target one of your banished zombie monsters, place that target on the top of your deck. So this is cool to recycle things like Mizuki and Plague Spreader Zombie. You can take them from the banished pile and put them on top. And then if you just have two zombies in the grave, you can draw a card, which is cool because it makes him like a floater. He'll replace himself. Also a searchable by Giant Rat, which Vinny is playing. So there's some synergy there. Uh, Giant Rat also searches out Pyramid Turtle and Psychic Commander. So it kind of gets you to a part of your engine. Also, you can get Grand Mole, which I think in Highlander format is really good since there's only one of each extra deck monster that you could possibly play. Uh, Grand Mole outing something is, is always really strong, even in regular Edison format. Outside of that, it looks like he's just playing a bunch of good cards in general, like Gale, Caius, Cyber Dragon, Dark Armed. Uh, he has the Psychic Package for Teleport, Instant Fusion for Reaper on a Nightmare. I would say Zombies is one of the stronger decks in Highlander format because if you look at a actual Edison zombie deck, it has 21 ofs in it already. So transitioning it over to Highlander isn't actually much of a difference. Like what I'm looking at right here is you essentially go down one goblin zombie, but the rest of the deck is pretty much very similar to what they can play in regular Edison. In a side deck, I see Transmigration Prophecy. People talk about this card, but no one ever plays it. Um, so it's good to see that this is seeing play. You can't run more than one DD Crow in this format. So it makes sense that you will want other things that can um, disrupt the graveyard essentially. But yeah, Congrats to Vinny on getting top eight. Okay, next up we have Iceberg, and this is a Gladiator Beast deck. This is one of the other strongest decks in this format for obvious reasons. Glad Beast don't need to have multiples of their cards. In fact, they probably shouldn't play multiples of their cards because they're really bad to draw. So instead, just playing one of each Glad Beast, even things that I've, I've never even seen this guy before, Dimakari, like maybe when I was a kid, but I don't remember him at all. Uh, he can attack twice, it looks like, during the battle phase after he's tagged into, so no one no one plays him because he doesn't go plus on summon. If you notice, the, all the Glad Beast that people take to play in regular Edison format, they either do something functionally really good or they just go plus one when they're summoned, like Beast Jari pops a back row, Ramilla pops a monster, Equest gets back a guy, etc. You get the idea. Uh, but this is just to have more names, I would assume. And then there's Test Ape. So it says, when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one level four or lower Gladiator Beast monster from your deck. Now, normally this card would be very mid in regular Edison format, but I think in Highlander, this is actually a pretty decent one. Uh, and then you have the Stratos package with Prisma, Stratos is one of the best cards in this format. Just that free plus one. He's also searchable. This deck doesn't play reinforcement in the army or e-call, but a lot of the other decks that people were playing do play the full three Stratos. Then there's tech stuff like Widespread Ruin. This is a very old school card back in the days of Sakuretsu armor. So Widespread Ruin is a non-targeting Sakuretsu. Essentially, it just kills the highest monster on the field, whatever has the highest attack. And it's good because it kills things like Thought Ruler Archfiend. So if your opponent has two monsters on the field and you activate Widespread Ruin on an attack, it will destroy the highest attacking monster. And if they were to chain Book of Moon, to put it face down, then it will still destroy the other highest attacking monster because it doesn't target. So it destroys on resolution, uh, whereas Sakuretsu armor and Deep Prison, these cards target. So if you book a moon the monster, you know that it doesn't resolve. So this is kind of a cool card. Ancient Forest, I've been seeing this see some play in regular Edison format. 
This is really good for Glad Beast because when you activate it, it turns everything to defense position and it stops flip effects from activating. But also when you activate it, it turns everything from defense position to face up attack position and flip effects don't activate. But also if any monster attacks, it gets destroyed at the end of the battle phase, which means that Glad Beast completely play around it by tagging out. So the Glad Beast that attacked would be destroyed on the end phase, but you just tag it out first before Ancient Forest can destroy it. And your opponent has to deal with this in a weird way because things like Titanial or Drill Warrior or whatever people want to summon, if they attack with it, it'll die. You know, regular monsters can't just tag out. So Ancient Forest is pretty good for Glabbies. And then in a the side deck, there's just like a lot of removal. So I see Hammer Shot, Soul Taker, Grand Mole, DD Warrior Lady, Trap Hole. This is another card that you don't typically see played in regular Edison format. But yeah, congrats to Iceberg for getting top eight with Glabbies. Okay, next up we have Dominique Roberts. He's actually the mod for the I'm Your Podcast Discord server. Shout out to Dom. He also plays Zombies. Again, this is one of the strongest decks in this format. Uh, and he finished X1 in Swiss. He was the third seed, so really good showing. There were six rounds of Swiss, so he's 5-1. But he has some spice in here. So Monster Gate, I haven't seen this card played in Edison at all, like literally at all. Uh, and then Creature Swap, we know that that can be really good with zombies. They have recruiters and things that they want to give you that benefit them when it goes to the graveyard. But again, zombies is a deck that doesn't has it doesn't have to change very much to be played in Highlander format. It gets to basically play all of its cards that it plays in regular Edison. So it's very, very, very good. Things to note is that he plays like D Alk and Zaborg as light monsters. Of course, Cyber Dragon. Uh, these are the Supplement the Chaos Horse, which I think is a great card, and also Return from Different Dimension. He's got the one Doom Kaiser Dragon sided just in case he goes against the Mirror Match, which there actually are three zombie decks in top eight. So this is a very probable thing to come up. And then in the extra deck, I kept seeing this thing be summoned. Psychic Life Transfer. I forgot that this existed. Again, this is a Teledad card. This is from way back in the day, but it's a generic level seven synchro and you can remove one psychic monster from your graveyard and you gain 1200. So that's not only a shit ton of life, but the stats of it are pretty good too. It's 2400 attack. And I think the reason why he plays this is for a couple of reasons. One, gaining life is great, but also it fuels your return. So you can like banish Kreebons, banish Psychic Commander, gain life, but also make your return live and then you have like shooting doji to also feed your return so yeah this is this this card is insane especially in this format but yeah i like the synergy between psychic life transit and all of the banishing stuff that's going on congrats to dom on getting top eight okay and last but not least of the top eight decks and then we'll move on to top four and then top two and everything we have amine so this is just like a good stuff deck if you notice this deck is just trying to trade usually one for one with your opponent back and forth but favorably so like there's a lot of spot removal type of cards he's playing monarchs injection fair lilies here card trooper crystal seer just to dig and also replace itself so it's a floater and if you get to flip it and then get the plus one then you contribute it for a monarch there's some interesting stuff in here too so uh skill successor i haven't seen this card in a long time i know it exists but i haven't seen it target one face up monster you control it gains 400 attack until the end of this turn during your turn except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard you can banish this card from your grave target one face up monster you control that target gains 800 attack until the end of this turn so this is a trap that does something when you flip it but then it also does something in the graveyard kind of like breakthrough skill and i believe the graveyard effect can be used during the damage step because it modifies attack and defense uh, another interesting card is zoma the spirit so i have never seen this be played in regular edison format but when i saw it get flipped i realized that this thing has some potential i don't know what deck would play it but reading the effect right so especially summon this card in defense position as an effect monster level four attack 1800 defense 500 it's also still treated as a trap. If this card is summoned this way and destroyed by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of the monster that destroyed it. So when me and Kenny were talking about this on stream, you can crash this into a monarch and you'll take 600 damage from the battle damage, but then they'll take 2400. And in my head, I'm like, that's so much fucking burn damage. Like that's insane. Like even just crashing this thing in the Stratos, your opponent will just take 1800 burn damage. I think if nothing else, this tournament really showed the potential of some cards that are obscure. And I'm kind of side-eyeing some of the options. Also, I haven't seen this card be played in years, but this is like a meme, four-star Ladybug of Doom. Uh, destroy all level four monsters your opponent controls. I could see this randomly being good against Hero Beat. Like their typical play is Stratos and then they go Alias. But I think Snowman Eater just does the job better, which is why everyone just plays Snowman Eater. It's also, it not only walls off the monsters, but it destroys one. So it still handles the destruction effect, but then it doesn't even die to Stratos or Alias. But in Highlander format, you're going to see stuff like this. Four Star Ladybug of Doom. This is a classic card for sure. DD Assailant, another card I haven't seen in a long time. You see this card in GOAT format, but never in Edison. People don't play this. They just play DD Warlord 
ability since she's unlimited. Legendary Jujutsu Master is also a really good card. I think this card is decent in general. If Glad Beasts weren't so bad in regular Edison, this would see more play, I would think. Um, but this just puts any monster that attacks it in defense mode on top of the deck. So if you crash your Laquari into this guy, uh, while it's face down, it'll flip up and then Laquari will go to the top of the deck, which not only do they go minus one, but now they're drawing Laquari again. This this used to be the bane of Glad Beast after game one, and it's still very, very good against that deck. Interestingly enough, Amine is signing Wave Motion Cannon. I don't know if there was some kind of slight burn strategy going on here because Zoma has burn damage. Obviously, obviously Destalos also burns sometimes. And then it's Wave Motion Cannon. So maybe this was like in case he went against burn and and if you draw this against them in the early game like you can just activate it and at this point you're attacking them but also you're about to burn them too and they don't have an out to it i'm not really sure otherwise why this would be sided but yeah the rest of this deck is just like good stuff the deck congrats to amine on getting top eight okay so moving into top four so this is Stango's deck. You guys all know Stango from Master and the Pupil, one of my best friends. Uh, he's just playing. This is the deck that I made for if I was playing the tournament. I, I showcased it on a lot of the videos leading up to it. But this is Hero Frogs, my take on it in Highlander. I think this deck is really strong. It's a bit hard to play, but I think Hero Frogs is just naturally like a little bit more skill intensive than people get it, give it credit for. In Highlander format, it's even more skill intensive because you don't have the brokenness of triple substitute, triple swap frog and stuff like that. But one of the coolest things about this deck is Plasma. Like this guy guy is insane if you suck up something that makes him bigger than monarchs it's really hard to out him he negates all flip effects he negates all effects of monsters that are summon period so like literally skill drain on legs also this deck gets to play three copies of stratos because it has e-call rota and stratos and there are so many heroes there's even one extra hero in this deck so he's playing all the ones from the regular hero frog deck and, and modern edison but then there's Plasma being added as an additional hero, which combos well with a scapegoat, and then scapegoat combos well with a substitute, of course, but it also combos well with like the Breed Dragon, Junk Synchron, Cyber Valley, one for one. You have your Light Monsters, you have Raikou, Cyber Valley, Zaborg, Alias is searchable, Cyber Dragon, and this all feeds into Chaos Sorcerer. Then you have your Hand Traps, Tragodia, Gores, Battle Fader. Uh, Future Fusion is really strong. Future Fusion sending Dandelion is actually insane if you have substitute. There's like a turn that Stengo did in top four against Silchus Ruin turn one where he ended with eight cards. So that was nuts. But yeah, this is basically just a good stuff deck as well. A lot of powerful bombs in this deck. Like you don't have triple Kaius, but then you just play Ryza and Zaborg. So you still have technically triple Kaius. You have instant fusion to be a water monster and also a hero. Uh, and then he plays this Cyber Saurus thing. I'm not really a fan of this, but this is a machine that you can instant fusion for. So if your opponent has Cyber Dragon on the field, his logic was that you could instant fusion, bring this out and then contact. The side deck has Light and Darkness Dragon. This card puts a lot of decks in a coffin, especially if you realize they're trying to play those one for one trade decks like Widespread Ruin, Sakuretsu and stuff like that. This is a great card against those types of decks. Malevolent Catastrophe, another copy of Heavy Storm in a way. Since this deck doesn't play a lot of back row, it can get away with this. Uh, and then you have like Lightning Vortex if things, you know, get too aggressive. This deck has a lot of discard outlets or cards that it wants to discard to the graveyard i should say but yeah hero frogs making top four which is actually crazy because they lose so many cards in highlander format but the engine is still just somehow really really strong and uh yeah congrats to stango on getting top four okay this one is boomer duelist a supporter of the i'm there podcast he's on our patreon so he got top four with stun essentially it's like hero stun i think this deck is awesome like is playing a very small monster count, which I personally didn't know was possible in this format. I, I every deck that I've built played like 24 monsters, basically. And this one is only playing 14, including <laughs> Elemental Hero Sparkman. So yeah, he's got like the Stratos package, which is strong. E-Call Rota, so there's three copies of it. Um, and then he's able to play things like Gemini Spark because there's Crusader of Endymion. And then there's also this Gemini Lancer card. And then he's got Forbidden Chalice, which combos well with Beast King Barbaros to make him absolutely huge. Goes to 3,000. Skyscraper, so your guys can always be anything. And then a shit ton of traps. Most of these you've already seen before, like widespread. But then there's also Fiendish Chain, Dark Bribe. Oppression's being played in his deck. Now he's actually running the one hero blast because I believe this can get back not only just Alias, but Sparkman as well. So that's kind of cool. In the side deck, there's Rivalry of the Warlords and Blackhorn of Heaven. Uh, this card sees play later on in Yu-Gi-Oh! after Edison format, but in Edison, people typically don't play it. It only works on built-in summons or inherent summons. So things like Dark Arm, JD, Chaos Sorcerer, uh, but it negates them and just gets rid of them completely. So all synchros and stuff like that get ruined by this card. In the extra deck, we have Super Alloy Beast Raptinus for Super Poly. There's also Cyber Twin Dragon, which I have not seen anyone try this yet, uh, but you just need two Cyber Dragons. So you could theoretically have theirs and yours. 
and then super poly those into this guy and he's basically a 5600 damage monster if this ever comes up i imagine a super game it's crazy because you could also just summon cyber dragon and contact their cyber dragon but if you have super poly you could do a bit more and here's an interesting one so if you have grand mole and alias that has been normal summoned to get his effect making him elemental hero neos you could actually contact for this thing i've never seen this summoned in my life but it says once per turn you can target one monster your opponent controls return that target to the hand during the end phase shuffle this card into the extra deck so I don't know why Konami decided to make this thing absolutely unplayable. The first part of the effect is insane, like just bounce something every turn. But then on the end phase, it gets shuffled back into your extra deck for no reason at all. Like you just put all those cards into this and it goes away. I don't know why they did that, but yeah. Usually when people play this guy, I see them doing it because of Prisma. Prisma can send Grand Mole to the grave or whatever, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't imagine you'd ever summon this. But if you did, that would be the craziest pop off ever to be able to summon this and then like bounce their extra deck monster, attack for 25 for game. I, I would assume something crazy. But yeah, congrats to Boomer Duelist on getting top four. Okay, in second place, we have my teammate, Ring of Destruction member, Silchus Ruin. He doesn't really need an introduction. You guys know him. He's one of the best players in Edison. He was the first person that I saw who brought the Diva Hero strategy to the top of many events, especially in 2022. He pretty much was running the format for a while with Diva Hero, and then he switched to Zombies, and he's been doing well with that deck too. So I wasn't surprised at all that not only did he go undefeated in Swiss, he was 6-0, and then he won top eight and top four, playing through some of the craziest openings from his opponent. It's literally he won top eight through double dust shoot then he won top four against stango who opened absolutely insane with future fusion plus substitute plus stratos and all these other things like, it was crazy so yeah soldiers is cracked as a player and because this deck is so similar to what he plays in regular edison like he is the hero zombie guy now he didn't put heroes in this version but he knows how he knows how to play zombies really well he plays all the lines consistently and he's a very fast player so i wasn't surprised that he was just executing things really quick and honestly pushing a lot of people shit in like you can check out the vod it should be up now on our channel but watch some of his games they were brutal like he would just absolutely brutalize people with this deck definitely one of the strongest decks definitely one of the strongest players and I imagine people will try this list out in future events in the Highlander format. But yeah, there's nothing but plays here. If you're a good technical player, this is one of the decks that you can really express your skill level with. Congrats to Socials on getting second. And in first place, we have my good friend of over 15 years and also someone who literally went to the same exact local as me, which is Alternate Universes from Philadelphia, Luke Feeney. He's a top Yu-Gi-Oh player from the past. He's topped the YCSs. He's topped ARGs. Um, so he's just a really good player. He doesn't play online Yu-Gi-Oh! as much as the rest of us, which is crazy because despite that, he's just a really good card game player. So he's able to come into the format and just play at a high level. And he ended up winning $500 for first place using none other than Glad Beast. So this is the second Glad Beast deck we're seeing in top eight. So there were three zombies, two Glad Beasts, one Hero Frog, one Stun, and one just good stuff deck. But yeah, Glad Beast took it all. It's interesting because the finals was best three out of five. He actually won 3-0. Like he didn't drop a single game in the finals. And I remember watching some of his matches during the live stream. And there were so many games that he would win by just beatdown. Like it, there would be no Glider to Beast involved. They would just be like Stratos and Alias and DD War Lady and Exile Force. Like everything else. Especially in games two and three when like Breaker and stuff like that come in. But yeah, this deck is really solid. He explained a lot of his choices at the end of last night's VOD. So if you fast forward all the way to the end, we do an interview with him to explain his card choices and stuff. And just to talk a little bit about his past because he's a top Magic player from the past as well. He was on the Pro Tour and he was also ranked number one in DC deck building. So in general, Luke Feeney is one of the better card players, not just in Yu-Gi-Oh, but in other card games too really really talented player in all our play testing sessions we made fun of him for playing glad Beast, but it worked out for him he went uh, x1 in swiss finished in second seed and then he won the whole tournament so i'm really happy to see that if it wasn't my teammate so just who won it was one of my close friends that i've known for so so long who actually took the whole thing he played really well and uh yeah glad beast one of the only ways this deck will ever get first place i feel like in edison now watch i say that and they somehow end up winning like rbet rulers or some shit or like the world championship that jazz is hosting but i don't see it for them and regular edison so this format it's a playable deck so if you like gladiator to beast i think that this is a format that you want to try them in because they are a lot stronger here than they are when there's so much hero beat and black wings and stuff like that around anyways guys if you are interested in joining these types of tournaments in the future please join our patreon the link is in the description below our server is not only just Yu-Gi-Oh, but we have uh, other things as well, like Monster Hunter, Pokemon, Super Smash Bros. We post winning deck lists and things like that from the tournaments that we throw. We have locals usually every week online. 
There's all types of stuff for the podcast where you can ask questions. There's suggestions for the podcast. There's episode discussions. If you have a YouTube channel or something that you want to promote, there's a channel for that as well. So there's a lot here. We have all types of things to talk about in the I Am There podcast. Discord server is not strictly a Yu-Gi-Oh server because the I Am There podcast is not just Yu-Gi-Oh. But if you happen to like Yu-Gi-Oh and you like other nerd things like anime and things like that, I think that this is a great server to be a part of. So check out our Patreon. See if this is something that you're down for. And we greatly appreciate all the support. I appreciate everyone who joined the live yesterday, who chatted with us. Special shout out to Frozen Soul, who actually donated, I'm pretty sure, well over $1,000, which I put all into the prize pool. So shout out to him. This tournament was originally going to be like a $100 tournament, just something small. And then it ended up being a, a 1K somehow, which is insane. So really happy about that. And we'll be doing more stuff in the future. But yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.